YouTube was cracking. It's your boy Nick here, back with Big Dogs Gotta Eat Fantasy Football. Today we're doing another mock draft, back by popular demand. We're going from the number one overall spot. 10-team league. It's on Yahoo, so I mean, typically they only do standard, but I'm kind of drafting as if it's 0.5 PPR. I guess it doesn't really matter. The way they do their starting lineups is quarterback, three wides, two running backs, a tight end, kicker, defense. In my league, we do quarterback, two wides, two backs, a tight end, two flexes. And I'll check back in with you guys in a couple minutes when this thing actually starts. All right, so we're kicking off. Again, I'm first pick overall. And I got my boy Le'Veon Bell. If you watched my uh, Steelers team outlook, um, I talked about Bell all around as a player. Him and Johnson are kind of, you know, it's 1A, 1B. It really doesn't matter. It's kind of preference for me. I like the fact that Le'Veon, one, his usage when he came back last year was just absurd. He was getting over 20 touches a game. You guys all know how talented he is. He has one of the best offensive lines in the NFL, like top three as per Football Outsiders and Pro, fo pro Football Focus. They're returning all five stars to the line, so there'll be no difference there. Um, we looked at the splits also with Martavis Bryant in the lineup, and Le'Veon Bell actually performed even better. That offense is going to be just out of control. The field should be spread so wide for Le'Veon. They can't stack the box against him when you have guys like Brown and Martavis on the outside. The offense should just be incredible, and it should run through Le'Veon as usual. So I like Le'Veon preferred to David Johnson, but um, I wouldn't be mad at anybody for taking DJ over Bell. And I actually kind of like the fact that Bell is holding out because I think it's better for his body, you know, given his injury history, less wear and tear during training camp. I also think you have more of a chance at getting a handcuff. I don't usually do handcuffs, but if it's the first or second overall pick, it's not a bad idea to handcuff it. With David Johnson, you don't actually know who would be the handcuff there, right? It it would be a combination of like Kerwin Williams and the rookie TJ Logan. So you don't, if he goes down, you don't have someone that you know is going to step in as the featured workhorse. In Pittsburgh, I think we have that. It's either going to be the rookie James Conner from Pittsburgh, as it stands right now. That that would be my guy. I do think they're going to take a hard look at re-signing D'Angelo Williams. And in that case, if D'Angelo Williams is re-signed, then he's your handcuff. So that's just another small reason that I would I would prefer Le'Veon. It's another little tiebreaker is that Pittsburgh went for two on uh, like 30. 2% of their touchdowns last year, the highest in the NFL by at least like 5 or 6%. So that's a lot more opportunity for you know him to score two points here, two points there. It's just these little tiebreakers that I think I make me like Bell over David Johnson a little more. And I've done a few mocks with the one pick, and I really, really, really actually love it because you get one of the top running backs, and when you come to this turn, there's still a lot of really good players on the board. You can get your pick of basically two of the top wide receivers, like right now, I'd have my eye on, wow, they have their rankings. They have Gillisley at 32. See, Michael Thomas almost dropped to me at 20. AJ Green at 16. So they took four nets. So I have my pick of T.Y., Dez, Doug Baldwin, Amari Cooper. You know what? T.Y. is kind of scaring me with the Andrew Luck injury, and we don't really have a report. But I'm, I'm going to pick T.Y. because he's my highest ranked on this board. I'm going to imagine that Andrew Luck is back, and he'll be playing the first game of the season. So he'll be my wide receiver one. I got another pick right now. I think the top value is, again, another wide receiver. And it's an argument I've been kind of having with myself, whether I want Amari Cooper or Doug Baldwin. I would say that Doug Baldwin has a higher floor. And since I went with T.Y. Hilton, who is a little bit of a riskier pick only because we don't know what Andrew Luck's deal is right now, I think I'm going to side with Doug Baldwin because he's safer. In case something happens to, to Luck, you know, you still have a really safe wide receiver, too, behind him there. I mean, I love, I absolutely love Cooper. If Hilton or Baldwin was not on the board, he would be my next pick over Des Bryant. Des is my last ranked guy out of those four wide receivers this year. So yeah, I've been finding myself really loving the number one overall pick because you get the running back, you get your choice of like two really solid wide receivers at the turn. And then when you come back again at the 40-41 pick, you still have so much value there. There's a good chance that like a really good tight end falls to you there. One of the top ones, like a Kelsey or a, I, I've been getting Greg Olson there like so often. I think in every one of my play draft leagues, basically, I've gotten Greg Olson as either my fourth or fifth round pick, depending on you know where I take him there. I've been getting a combo of Greg Olson and Larry Fitzgerald like a ton as my fourth and fifth round picks, which I absolutely love. So I'm seeing like a ton of value fall. I usually don't love like year over year. I don't love the first round, uh, the first overall picks because... You know, it's not, it's really hard to bait, to draft based off value when you're there. You usually have to reach for the guys that you like, because obviously you pick, you know, you're the snake draft, you pick once, 
then you pick again right after that, and you got to wait 20 picks. So if you got a guy that you love, you might have to reach for him really high, which makes me not love the pick. But this year in particular, I'm finding that I uh, a lot of guys that I really like are falling to me at those at those picks. Tom Brady went 25th overall. All right, so we're at pick 37. Eddie Lacy just went off the board at 34. See, this is this is where it helps to do mock drafts on different platforms because you see Gronk. Drop to 31. And this right-hand corner is where you see all like the recent picks. Gronk to 31. Travis Kelsey to 35. If you're doing like a, a, a play draft draft or a My Fantasy League or even like a fantasy football calculator mock draft, those guys are going way earlier than... Jesus Christ, I'm going to Martellus Bennett at 37. Those guys are going way earlier than where they're picked here. All right, so I'm up right now. I'm actually going to go with Sammy Watkins here because the reports out of camp so far, I know it's super early, but supposedly he's looked incredible. And now we have another pick. Oh, there's still so much talent on the board. I'm, I'm deciding between Tymont, Tyreek Hill, and Greg Olson and Larry Fitz. But I'm going to go with Greg Olson. I think Greg Olson's probably like the best value at tight end like in this draft, to be honest with you. he's like, He has the exact same... He has the highest floor, basically, of any, any like tight end here. Or any tight end even being drafted before him. He just has a little bit of a lower ceiling than the guys like Gronk and Kelsey, of course, and Jordan uh, Jordan Reed. But I think he's the safest play there, and you're getting him 20 picks after you would get those first couple guys off the board. So right now we have three solid, really solid wide receivers. Like I said, Watkins, I, I'm not super high on him, but at pick 40, you're getting a guy that has top five potential at the position. He said his foot's 100% healthy. I, I follow a bunch of the beat writers, the beat reporters on Twitter that cover the Bills, and they're they're all pretty much saying that Sammy Watkins looks like a, an animal on the on the practice field so definitely something to monitor you know you don't want to take every beat report that you see like super seriously i know they change the adps so much at, at, during every report it's ridiculous but you know you want to take the good with the bad and just make sure you're monitoring them throughout so like i said i play two wide receivers two running backs two flexes so my next pick i don't think it's necessary for me to shore up my running back spot i'm still picking based off value these middle rounds i i usually don't even take a tight end early on or a quarterback and i'll usually just load up on on skilled players wide receivers and running backs and those will be like my next four or five picks and that's probably what i'll keep doing just looking at the board right now you just have so much potential still on the board between gillisley keenan allen dalvin cook landry is dropping really wow land jarvis landry is really falling off on huh? crowder fitzgerald wow mariota's up there it's really crazy just doing mock drafts on on random random sites you got to be careful of that too because you have guys like danny woodhead who by the time draft come around he's going to be ranked way higher obviously with the dixon injury but he's all the way down here they have Diggs ranked all the way down here too who else can we find Gibon, quincy and Nunwa. what are we doing over here yahoo you think the amount of money that goes into fantasy football like that goes into the yahoo fa the yahoo fantasy might be like the biggest driver of traffic that yahoo has as a company and they still like have some bullshit going on like this the rankings are ridiculous you think they could pay their fantasy guys a little more pay me yahoo actually i wouldn't even take a job yahoo if they offered it to me there we go we see some of those wide receivers going off the board now but fitz falls to me he's easily my pick here i've been taking him around that four or five turn a lot but since they have him ranked so low, he's not going that early here. So I'm just took Dak Prescott. There you go. Eifert. All right, people are getting out of control. So I'll go with Fitz here. Now it gets tricky because a lot of the guys that we see here, like Carlos Hyde, Dalvin Cook, we don't actually know that they have like some of the higher ceilings that you could have. But we don't. We haven't seen enough reports to tell us whether or not they're even going to be the starters or anything like that. Like normally, I, I told you guys how much I love Amir. I'm going to go with Dalvin Cook right now, just kind of because I really like Dalvin Cook to take over that number one spot in Minnesota and, and just absolutely beast it. A pick like there for me would would definitely come down to you know the training camps and and reports that we've seen and how they played in the preseason, of course. But it would definitely have been between Hyde. Dalvin Cook, Amir Abdullah, and Bilal Powell. I like all four of them a lot. So, And, and what I've been f finding is it is kind of good to go with running backs earlier. It's not what I did here, really, but at least get one running back in those first two rounds because when you get to like these later rounds, there's not as much running back value compared to wide receivers here whereas when you get like into this area, it's more like sleepers, right? Like you have a Samaje Perrine 
or Pirine, however you say it, in this area down here. And you have no idea if he's even going to be the starter. He's probably not even going to be the starter, but you have a guy like Kelvin Benjamin being picked around the exact same spot who's going to be the number one weapon in Carolina and number one goal line threat. You know, like that's where value doesn't make sense, right? You wouldn't take Pirine over Benjamin because Benjamin's a good, a pretty good bet to finish inside like the top 25 as a receiver. And there's a good chance Pirine, whatever, finishes like outside the top 30 or 40. So I would say definitely like when you hit like round eight-ish, round nine, the value at wide receiver is much, much heavier than it is at running back. And it's a lot of those guys that a lot of you guys like, as well as myself, like a Jameson Crowder or a Willie Sneed to have a big year, a big breakout year, right? And those are the guys you can get around this time in the draft. All right, so I'm up. And this is another thing to keep your eye on, obviously. Like look at the last few guys drafted. You had defenses. You had kickers. That shit's not going to happen in real drafts. So a guy like Amir Abdullah, Willie Sneed, Golden Tate, all those kind of guys are not going to fall this late in drafts. So when you're like, oh, I'm getting them in round eight, round nine in my in my mock drafts, I should get them. If they're guys you really want, then you're going to have to know that they're going to be going earlier in real drafts. Don't get fooled by this kind of shit. I'll go Willie Sneed here. Really like Sneed's upside as, as a wide receiver too. You know, we've seen his floor the last couple of years. We haven't seen his ceiling now that Brandon Cooks is gone. Could take a huge step forward. Frank Gore, Golden Tate, I just got picked. Terrell Williams, I love. Kelvin Benjamin, Cameron Meredith, even Doug Martin, Greg Garcon, Danny Woodhead all the way down here. I forgot about him. Jeremy Macklin. All these guys have really solid value. I like John Brown down here. It's creeping. Eric Ebron, Kinsey Inunua. I like Rob Kelly, man. Terrence West. It's my round 10 and 11 picks. And now is probably when, if I don't see people that I absolutely love, which I still do see a lot of value on the board between like Danny Woodhead, Terrell Williams, Doug Martin and stuff is when I'll probably look towards a quarterback and kind of just check out and see if there's still enough guys on the board that I would be comfortable with as my QB1 and it actually doesn't look like there's a lot of guys. I wouldn't hate Rivers, but I would much prefer one of these three, Dalton, Stafford, Tyrod Taylor. And if I don't get one of them now, there's a good chance that 20 picks later, I'm not going to get one of them. So just, you know, when you, if you're doing a late round quarterback kind of thing, just monitor the quarterbacks that are still on the board and ask yourself... Would I be comfortable with one of these guys as my starting quarterback? I'll take Dalton. I like Dalton as a, as a sleeper this year to bounce back. But they real some upside. If you're a late round quarterback guy, there's a good chance that you're going to be streaming, right? So if you're someone who would is comfortable streaming week to week, just picking up based on matchups, and you might be if you play like in an eight team or a ten team league. There's going to be a lot of quarterbacks available on the waiver wire. So you can stream week to week. So what I would do is actually look at the first week of this, the NFL schedule and see who's playing a shitty defense, right? I haven't really looked at it. We'll look at it now. Fuck it while we're on here. So you can look at the first week of the, the season and see like who you'd be comfortable streaming against as one of those late round guys. Because if you're going to use him for one week and then be comfortable dropping him, then maybe you don't want to draft a guy like Matt Stafford who's going up against a tough Arizona Cardinals defense when you don't want to use him that first week, right? Why use a pick on him when you're going to be benching him? You could look at someone like Tyrod Taylor who's going against the Jets pass defense, which was garbage. So there's not a ton of like late round guys who have poor matchups. Dallas pass defense wasn't good like Eli Manning or something like that. But you get the point, right? If you're someone who likes to go week to week, just just be conscious of that because you don't want to pick a quarterback late and then be like, oh, fuck, I don't even want to start him in the first, the first week of the season, right? So my team's pretty, pretty solid right now, right? We have three wide receiver ones in their offense. Hilton and Baldwin both working with elite quarterbacks. Sammy Watkins will be elite if he can stay healthy. Bell and Cook is my running backs, but we also have depth there. Right, we have three solid wide receivers on the bench, Abdullah. So I probably need some more running back depth for sure. That would be my next pick. And there's still a lot of guys like Danny Woodhead on the board. I'd probably take a Derrick Henry at this point. Not someone I love, but in round 12, you know, the upside is just ridiculous there, of course. Then you still have guys like Terrence West and Rob Kelly who are going to be the starters on their team, right? Early down work, most likely getting the goal line work. At least for when I look at guys like that, right? You might be like, oh, they're not going to finish the season as a top 20 running back. You might think that way, but even if they don't, right, at least for the first couple weeks, they're going to get those starter touches. It's so like weeks one, two, three, four. And this goes for guys who own like an Ezekiel Elliott who need to fill in for the first couple weeks. They're going to get starter touches at least for one, two, three weeks, right? And then the coach might be like, eh, hold on, let me make my picks real quick. And then, you know, maybe three or four weeks into the season, the coach might be like, eh, let's, you know, let it. Let P. Ryan run the have that position, right? And then you have James White, that that pass catching role in New England is always really, really valuable, obviously. But you know, by the time week four or five rolls around, you're so deep into the waiver wire. There's a ton of pickups that can be had. 
So as much as fantasy, as much as the draft obviously helps you out throughout the year, just being active on the waiver wire and picking up free agents along the way is, is of course, like 50% of the battle, at least throughout the season. So pick up a guy like like Terrence West or Rob Kelly, who are going to get 12 to 15, if not 18 or more touches, at least for week one, two, three. And then by week three, you know, you should be able to have an eye on guys on the waiver wire. So if they decide to get benched, the coach is like, ah, fuck it, they're not doing well. Then you probably have some kind of backup. Those are just my thoughts on these late round running backs. So even if you have P. Ryan projected to finish the year with more points than Rob Kelly, there's a good chance he doesn't start the year off strong. And my last two picks, I've talked about this before on Mock Dress. If you are drafting early, I'm talking about earlier than like the last week of August, I never draft a defense or a kicker. I always draft two more skill players because you see guys on the board like Jonathan Stewart or Matt Forte, right? Pick those two guys, keep them on your bench until like the last possible moment you can drop them and pick up a kicker or a defense. Because what happens if, you know, you draft on like August 1st, you take a kicker defense, cool, they're just sitting there. Say you take Matt Forte and Jonathan Stewart instead, and then in like preseason week two, God forbid Powell or McCaffrey tears their ACL. You just got an RB1 right there. You know what I'm saying? So if, you know, if you're dra- like my league drafts Labor Day Monday, so we draft like two days before the season starts. So it doesn't make sense for me to do that. There's no way there's an injury is going to occur in those three days. And I have to have my lineup filled. But if you're drafting weeks before the season even starts, there's a lot of room for something to occur, whether it's an injury or, or whatever it might be. Right. So take skill players if you're drafting from now until I would say like mid August, late August, as long as like, obviously you don't have to like pay for dropping for agents or it doesn't hurt your fab money or anything like that. We'll also suggest changing to a free agency acquisition budget. If you don't do that instead of waiver wire, you, you, everyone gets like a set budget for the year and, and you, it's a blind bid basically. That's the one I want to, I would debate Carson Palmer. I think he might bounce back. He had a strong end to the year and he's got good weapons. Um, but again, like I said, I don't even know if they'll let me draft them here. All right, cool. So I'll, yeah, whatever. These two guys. But you get the point when, when I'm saying to to look for up. Oh, I didn't even see a new one either. Um, to look for upside there rather than taking those two spots. So that wraps up my mock draft. You can see my team all the way here on the right. Let me take a screenshot. And I'll blow it up for you guys. That's my squaw. That's the squaw. Andy Dalton at quarterback is not something you love. I probably could have been more uh, assertive in taking a quarterback. I wasn't really paying attention. You're not going to hate having him as your QB1, and there's always going to be moves on the waiver wire in a 10-team league. Then you have a really, really solid stable of wide receivers. Hilton, Baldwin, Sammy Watkins, Fitz, Sneed, Tyrell Williams, Anunua. That's a crazy group of wide receivers. Running backs, I'm a little shorter on, but plenty of upside, plenty of floor there. I'm not worried about that. And plus, we have Le'Veon Bell, who basically is a RB1 and a wide receiver, too, in one slot. And then you got Greg Olson, who's never hurt, consistent, always going to be there, dynamite player. I still think he's the best value at tight end in this draft. So that's going to wrap up this video, y'all. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you have any questions about, you know, draft strategy or anything like that, just leave a comment down below. And, you know, you can comment down below what your favorite pick was of my draft and what your least favorite pick was of my draft. And again, just scroll down a little bit. Give it that thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. We'll be coming out with videos almost on the daily, baby, leading up to the season and in season. So I'll see y'all next time.